Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel. And today's project is going to be a page of interlocking uh, curving shapes, all painted in watercolour with some gold accents. So this week I've been playing with these shapes. These are like OG shapes and they're based on this kind of S curve. Um, so this one is the one I'm going to be doing today, but I've been doing quite a few of these this week. I got quite into it. So here's another page of the same shape, just done in a slightly different way. And then here's another page as well. These are the same shapes, they're just on their side. Um, and yeah, so I've been having fun with these, playing with them, doing them in different directions, embellishing them differently. Uh, but this is the one I'm going to show you today. And this is, this has got a little bit of complexity to it because there's a little step in the S curve, which I'll show you. So this is what I'm using today, um, but obviously work with the supplies and uh, everything that you've already got. This works with any kind of colours, so you don't need to stick to a particular colour palette. Um, you can just have a play and have fun with it. So I'm using my Arch watercolour paper. So this is the 7 by 10 inch block and this is the cold pressed paper. Um, I've got um, a ruler and a pencil because I'm going to be drawing a grid to make sure my shapes are all lined up nicely. Uh, but if you want to do this freehand, then that's absolutely fine too. Um, I have got uh, the watercolours I'm using today. I've got uh, quinacridone gold. I've got permanent alizarin crimson, winter violet, and then I got a new blue, so I'm having a play with this. So this is an indanthrene blue. Um, and that's a Windsor and Newton colour too. They're all Windsor and Newton colours. Uh, but like I said, you can use whatever colours you fancy. You can have a play. Um, so I've got my colours out and I've got my little plate that I'm using for a palette. I've got a couple of brushes. Um, I've got one that I'm going to be using to paint the shapes. Um, I've got a kind of medium sized brush and it comes to a fine point. That's going to help me get into the corners. Um, this one's a size six. And then I've got a fine brush for painting the gold details. So um, this happens to be a size three rigger brush, but um, any kind of small fine brush uh, would work. I've got my usual couple of jars of water, some paper towel, and then because I want to add some gold, I've got my little palette of Kuretake um, starry colours. And I'm probably going to use the blue gold for this one. Um, but if you wanted to, you could use a gold pen or something like that. So I'm starting by drawing a grid on my paper. Uh, this is just so I can get all of my shapes lined up. So I've got a kind of sense of, of kind of neatness about it. Um, so I've got to decide how many kind of squares across and down I want. And this will differ depending on the size of your paper. So my uh, paper happens to be 18 centimetres across, so if I give a two centimetre border on either side, like that, then I've got 14 centimetres, which could give me seven sections of two centimetres. So I think that's going to work quite nicely. So I just need to make the same marks at the top of the page and then I'll join them together with the ruler. And then I'm going to do the same the other way down the page as well. So I get a whole grid of squares, two centimetres across. So I've got my grid on here, but if I paint straight over this, you'll see quite obviously the horizontal and vertical lines through what I'm painting. So I could just go over the whole thing lightly with the uh, eraser and try and get as much off as possible without losing my uh, without losing my pencil lines. What you can do is you can put in particularly dark points, three along the top, so one in and then every every other one. So uh, one here, one here and one here and then the second line down I'm going to start there and then again every other one. And then this third line down matches the first line. And the points that we've put in here are going to be the points of the tops and the bottoms of these little shapes and the sides where they meet. 
And if there's a little bit of a darker mark there, it's not going to matter too much with this particular design because I'm going to go over it with watercolour and then I'm going to go over it with the gold. So it'll, it'll be less obvious. So now when I take my eraser and go lightly over everything, those points uh, stay quite clear. And then I can go over again a little bit more carefully in the kind of the centres of the sections between those areas and just get rid of any particularly dark lines that you can see in there. What I've left with on here is a lovely little grid of polka dots like this. I'm sure there are lots of other ways of doing the same, getting the same result. So if you've got a good one, why not put it down in the comments? I might try it in a future video or it might be helpful for somebody else. So the shape I'm going to make today is based on an S curve. So a curve one way and then a curve the other. And if you put these shapes together, just curve one way and a curve the other, and then a curve one way and then a curve the other, curve one way and then a curve the other, you end up with this onion shape. Um, and this is called an OG. I think it's called an OG. Um, if I'm wrong on the pronunciation, then please do correct me. The shape I want to do today is a little bit of a variation on this and it's got a step halfway down that S curve. So um, if I did a curve one way and then a curve the other, or starting from the top, a curve one way and then a curve the other, I want to put a little break in there. So I'm going to mark a little vertical line. I'm going to do the curve one way down to the top of that vertical line and then the curve the other way just after it. And I can do the same on this side. So a curve one way and a curve the other. And you can also do the move in one go like that. A curve one way and a curve, a step and then a curve the other. And you end up with this kind of lantern shape. I also want to practice this in watercolour too before going in on my final piece. So I'm just going to practice that movement and see how it works best for me. So I've got my, uh, my point at the top. So let's draw the curve one way, a little step down and a curve the other, a curve one way, a little step down and a curve the other. And then I think it might be best to turn my page so that I'm making essentially the same shape again. So starting at the point, a curve one way, a step down and a curve the other, a curve one way, a step down and a curve the other. And I've created this oniony shape. And I'm just going to blend that colour into the centre, maybe with a little bit of water, make it a little bit lighter in the centre. So here I've marked my four points, my four little polka dot points, and I'm going to try and draw my shape uh, and keep to those points. So a line down, a curve down, a little step, and a curve round, a curve down, a little step, and a curve round. Turn my page. A curve one way, a step down, and a curve the other. A curve one way, a step down, and a curve the other. And again, I'm just going to take my paint and this has already dried a little bit on the top. So I'm just going to wet the whole shape up to the edges and again add a little bit of water into the centre and blend that all in. So for my colours, I really want this kind of violet to be a key colour and the other colours kind of blending with it. So I've got my uh, plate which I'm using as a palette um, and I really like that because it allows me to create these puddles of colour and then create colours next to them and let them blend and mix so I get all these interesting middle tones in there. 
because uh, I don't just want to colour this with four different colours, I want to create mixes of all of the different colours here. So I'm going to take my crimson and make a little puddle of that as well here, and I can blend that into the violet on that side. And then the gold as well. And the gold blends nicely and kind of creates all these kind of orangey, blushy kind of tones with the with the alizarin crimson. So I get lots of kind of medium shades there. Also, I can take some of the gold and mix some of the violet into it. And it just dulls down both colours. You get a real kind of neutral, you get neutral kind of brownie tones with that. So you get some really interesting colours by mixing the gold and the violet together. What I want to avoid is mixing the blue and the gold uh, because I don't really want any greens in this. So I'm keeping the golds on this side and the blues on that side and they've got these kind of barrier colours in the middle so hopefully I shouldn't get too many greeny shades. Although if I got like an olivey greeny colour it wouldn't be the end of the world. Yeah, I could cope with something like that, but I don't want like lamey bright greens in there. So to start with, I'm mixing some of my crimson into the violet and giving myself a kind of plummy colour. Um, and so that's the colour I'm going to start with. And I'm going to start at the top left hand corner because I'm right handed and I'm just going to work my way down the page, um, adding these uh, these shapes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do one row and skip a row and then do another. So I'm going to do all of the ones starting on the left hand side first and then I'll move on to the ones in between. That will give me time for the paints to dry so when I come back to do the ones in between um, I can paint them without the, the colours running. It'll become more obvious when I, when I start. I'm going to put the tip of my brush right up against that uh, point that I made and make a swishing curve to about the middle of the the, the, the little square that, uh, that you can't see anymore because I rubbed it out. Um, I've made my little line down and then another swooping curve upwards. And I can just use my brush to neaten up that shape on that side. And I don't mind how neat or not this edge is because that's all going to be inside the shape. But this edge, I need to be really, that's the edge that's going to be seen. That's the edge that needs to be really neat. So another curve down, a little step and a curve out like that. And if this area is drying, I can just go over the edge of it there just with a little bit more wet paint and it'll just keep it wet for a bit longer. Now I'm going to turn the page and do the same thing on the other side. So point at that little spot, a curve down, a little step and a curve out and add a little bit more paint along there to keep it all nice and wet. So I've always got this wet edge that I'm kind of keeping working. And then the other side, swoop down, a step and back to join up with that shape. Add a little bit more colour along there. And then I'm just dipping my brush I'm dipping my brush in the water to clean it off a little bit and to get myself some water but I'm taking off a lot of the excess on the side of the jar because I don't want to add a huge amount of water into the centre here. Just a little bit. And anywhere that look like there might be hard edges forming I'm just going to go over and blend those in a bit. So that's one shape done. Let's turn this round again and decide on my next colour. And for this one, I think I want more of a bluey colour, but blue maybe mixed with a little bit of the violet. And then again, I'll start here. 
at the next little point. So a swoop down, a little step, and the outward curve. And then at this point, if these two shapes touch, that's absolutely fine. A little bit of a blend is going to be fine. A swoop down, a step, and a curve out. Turn my page. And do the other side. Swoop, step, curve. Swoop, step, curve. A little bit more colour along there. And then a little bit more water in the centre to make everything blend nicely. I quite like that sense of it being a little bit dark around the edges and then have the little kind of highlighted areas in the centre of the shapes. So, uh, so yeah, so that's why I'm adding water and not more paint. Turn around again. We're going to pick another colour. Uh, this time I want more of the crimson mixed with the gold. So, third shape. Swoop, step, curve. Swoop, step, curve. Turn it around. Swoop, step, curve. Swoop, step, curve. Try and keep this all nice and wet. And then just a damp paintbrush to blend it all together in the center. Okay. So now you can start to see the void in here would be the next row. So the next row of shapes is going to um, sit in here. But I don't want to paint those yet because these bits are still drying. So I'm going to paint the row below, which is kind of directly above, which is directly below the one I've just painted. So I'm going in here. Swoosh, step, curve. And actually the colour I've picked here looks very similar to the one above it. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more crimson just to mix it up a little bit. Swoop, step, curve. And if you wanted to, you could do a different colour on the bottom of the shape to the top. Let's turn this round. Swoop, step, curve. Swoop, step, curve. So I'm going to keep going, working my way down the page and adding these shapes. Um, and you'll see that the intermediate shapes, the voids, start to form and the whole pattern becomes more obvious as you keep going. So this is halfway through and you should be able to see that the shapes that are missing, the ones that are kind of left over, are the same as the shapes that you've been painting. So for most of them, all we're going to do is fill in these spaces. Um, and then the ones down the sides and at the bottom here, then they're going to be exactly the same as the ones we've just painted. Uh, but yeah, for these ones here, we can just fill in those spaces. And when you're choosing colours for these in-between ones, you can pick ones that, uh, that you haven't got in that area. So I don't have any kind of crimson ones here, so I'm going to go for a crimson one.
So I've got this one here, so this side I can just fill in the space that's left over. But uh, then on the right hand side, I can make my kind of neat edge there with the swoosh and the step and the curve. So let's keep going and fill the whole page. For my next step, I'm going to use my gold watercolour and just outline all of these shapes. And I can use the gold to correct slightly any of the areas where some of these shapes are a little bit wonky. So I can't do too much, but I can tend the outline to one side or another. So um, these paints are really nice. You kind of put water on them and then let it sit there and it kind of slowly becomes creamy and pasty. So when you start working with them, if you put a lot of water on, then they can be a little bit um, a little bit translucent and you don't get so much of the gold. But if you the longer the water sits there, the the goldier and creamier the paint becomes. Spend a little bit of time working out what's the best angle. I may end up turning my page a little bit. Um, but yeah, so I've got quite a bit of this uh, gold paint on my brush now and it's just a case of following those lines. And if you've got some areas where the gold doesn't look so strong, you can just take a little bit of extra colour while it's still wet and just tap it into those places. That stroke I did didn't look very strong gold-wise. And then move on to the next one. So the gold is good. I feel like this needs something else. So I'm just taking the same colours as I had before and I'm just going to make um, some little kind of little decorative designs in here. Maybe a dot at the centre of each one. And then let's see, maybe like a little petal shape off to the side, the top and bottom. And turn it around. There. Be like that. And then, oh, maybe, maybe just four more little dots. Just something to kind of fill the space up a little bit. Now, some of my gold wasn't quite dry and I've managed to smudge a little bit there. So I'm just going to put some water on it and pick it up. So I'm going to go over the rest of the design, add in these little shapes and the colours. I'm, I'm pretty much going with the same colour that was in the little area to start with. Um, and uh, yeah, just maybe a little bit more concentrated. But if it's if it's subtle, that's OK, too. It's good to have a mix.
So there we go, there's my page of OG patterns. I hope that you've enjoyed this, and if you give it a go, I'd love to see your versions of it. You can post them on Instagram and include my username, Lou Rachel Davis, um, and I will see them. I'm sorry I had to stop people tagging me in posts because I was just getting overwhelmed with spam, so I'm really sorry about that. And if Instagram sort themselves out, then I will reinstate that, but for now, um, you can still include my username in a post and I will see it. If you've liked the video, then please give me a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more, then do subscribe to the channel. So thanks very much, and I hope to see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.